Hey everybody, welcome back. Sorry that took a little bit longer. We were gabbing and I lost track of time, but we are back with the Brenton Files Monsters and Myths uh, last little hour we've got of our session today. Uh, the party has returned. <clears throat> to the home of Dr. Felix Ovid. Uh, they got blown up by a glyph of warding that either had been placed in the night or they didn't notice it last night uh, on the front door and are scouring the house for signs of where Dr. Ovid might be. Uh, right now, we find them in a library. Merrick has, uh, in trying to investigate a strange infernal tome, has found a, a secret passage of, sh of Shorch. Uh... And that is what we're going to explore right now. So, Merrick, we will start with you. I push it open more to look inside. Good to look inside. Great. So you look inside, and as you as you sort of push it open, you see that there's uh, a small uh, a small little chamber behind this bookshelf. Uh, it's really oh maybe only ten feet long and five feet wide. It's it's quite small, uh, but there are. Uh, some bookshelves on the walls, and they are all packed uh, with strange-looking books. Uh, there is also uh, a uh, chest on the far side of the room, sort of tucked up in one corner of the room. You have to specify, is it like a trunk chest, a trunk. or is it like the chest of a person? That's true. Based on everything that's happened in this house, <laughs> you're correct. It is a trunk chest. I would not have thought of that. <laughs> Um, so they're going to turn to everyone else, like, I found a room. Let's, uh, have a look on, on the inside. Yeah. Proceeding with caution. Sure. Nothing, nothing attacks you as you walk in the room, at least not yet. <laughs> I'm going to go check out the books and see what these are. All right. So looking at them, they all appear to be written in Infernal. I love that. I love that so much. Uh, it seems that... Uh, all right. Uh, it seems that many of them, uh, at first glance, seem to have to do with uh, summoning devils and uh, our sort of histories and logs and advice books about deals with devils. So this is my kind of shit, <laughs> and I'm going uh, to just do a deep dive into that and just ignore everything else. Okay. I wonder if there is a uh, contract somewhere. There could be. Too busy reading. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and make me, uh, make me another intelligence investigation, Merrick, uh, since I don't think your, your party is going to let you spend hours in here. So we'll see what you can sort of glom on to quickly. Natural 20 for 27. Yeah, very nice. Uh, all right. So as you sort of look through these books, you see a lot of them have to do with, like I said, uh, with... Um... I don't know why it's doing that. Sorry, I keep getting these weird messages from... It's fine. It's all fine. Um... A lot of them have to do with uh, devil summoning, deals with devils. Uh, there are some that ha that are sort of uh, uh, necromantic fiendish rituals, uh, rituals that draw on the power of the Nine Hells uh, to fuel their necromancy. Uh, there, there are some sort of magic ritual listings in all of these things. Uh, yeah, that's what you get from sort of looking quickly at these books. Zend and Zephyr? Um, uh, go ahead, Zephyr. <clears throat> uh, no, Zephyr was just going to look to see if he could find said contract. Uh, sure, I'll take investigation or perception, intelligence or wisdom. Investigation. And a 19. All right. Uh, so you look around and you see there are some... Uh, loose-leafed uh, scrolls and things of that nature, uh, but mostly they're just uh, bits and pieces of... Well, do you read Infernal? I do not. Okay, so none of them... I mean, at first glance, none of them appear to be contractual. There aren't any obvious like places for signatures on any of these, uh, so that's probably not, not what you're looking for around in and around these shelves. No, I, I probably... 
don't have the right tools to, to search this. I presume. Uh, sorry, say that again. Oh, just not reading Infernal, I probably don't know what I'm looking for. I'm probably just, like, groping around. To, to sure, I mean, if you were looking for a contract, you could at least be looking, like I said, for, like, signature lines, and you don't see any of those, so. Gotcha. Xanda? So, upon realizing that we were going to investigate this, Xanda pulls out her dagger, just in case, just to have <laughs> uh -huh. at her side, uh -huh. just at the ready. Um, when she walks into this room and realizes that everything is in a language that she cannot read, or understand. Mm -hmm. She starts at the bottom shelf and starts just pulling up, pulling on books to see if anything else opens. <laughs> and then every once in a while pulls one out and like shakes it to see if anything falls out of it and puts it back in. But I it's trying everything. to see if anything else opens up. I love it. <laughs> I love this. She's just going through. What's Lambeau doing, do y'all think? Let's have Lambeau tackle the trunk. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a trunk. That sounds, good. That sounds great. Or chest. <laughs> Yes, right. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, so we'll have Lambo. Lambo will go over and look at the chest. Uh, let's see. She likes investigation as well, so I'll give her an investigation check on it. Oops. Uh, she t <laughs> She's like, yeah, uh-huh. Chest. Let's open it. So she opens it up and... Oh, and a little dart flies out of the chest, but it does not hit her. She very quickly manages to get out of the way, but you all hear uh, the dart sort of fly out, hit up against one of the bookshelves, and you hear, like, the soft tinkling of what sounds like glass breaking. Ew. Uh, Zephyr will look at that dart and inspect it more closely. Do you look at it? You don't need to make even a roll for it. You can see that the dart was uh, the 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 shaft of it was was made of rather thin glass, uh, and you can see sort of puddled on the floor underneath where it hit the bookshelf, and a little bit left on the glass is some sort of liquid uh, that looks like it was meant to go through the needle part of the of the dart and probably be injected into whoever was hit by it. I'm going to go on a limb and, and think that Lambo probably said, what the hell? And that was, that's about it. <laughs> that sounds about what right. What are you doing? What is that noise? I can't concentrate and read it for making all that noise. She says, oh no, don't mind me. I almost got hit by some creepy dart. It's fine. I'll see what's in the trunk. Well, if you're fine, then good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she roots around in the trunk and she finds a couple of uh, black leather bound books uh, that are all blank. They look like maybe journals or something. Uh, she finds three rolled up pieces of parchment that as she looks at them, she very quickly realizes are spell scrolls. I will figure out which of them she can actually read. Uh, she does find, what else does she find? She finds, I don't think she reads Infernal either, because she does find a, a rolled up piece of parchment, another rolled up piece of parchment. Yeah, no, that's written in that same Infernal script and she has no idea what it is. So I, I forgot that Zephyr has Comprehend Languages, so he's going to use it as a ritual. Oh, excellent. Okay, so we'll give you 10 minutes to cast that. Fantastic, and we'll say that you could have started when you realized that everything was in Infernal. Um, I need to check in really quickly first, see which of these spell scrolls uh, Miss Lambeau can see. Let's see, she sees one of them uh, is definitely a scroll of Shocking Grasp. Mm. She sees another is... Let's see, I gotta see what is on the Sorcerer spell list. For the record, for me, uh, if it's on, if the spell is on your spell list, you'll immediately recognize it, and if it's of a level spell that you can cast, you can use it without any problem. Uh, if it's not on your spell list, uh, you are still welcome to attempt to cast the spell off of it. You'll just have to make an arcana check uh, and run the risk of having some sort of mishap if you don't do well. But anyone, even non-casters, could in theory cast off of a spell scroll. Interesting. Because uh, I think that's more fun. Um... All right, so uh, Zephyr, this my internet is being very slow, which I hope doesn't mean that the stream is crappy looking. But anyway, uh, Zephyr, you uh, read through these, uh, you read through some of these uh, books and things. Uh, and in, are you looking at particular this this parchment that she found, or some of the other books? Um, I am looking at the parchment first. Okay, I'm, I'm so th the it. parchment looks to be sort of. Uh, <laughs> 
rough draft contracts, maybe? It's sort of like the the musings of one person as they sort of go through their negotiating points. Mm. Uh, it does not look to be the final contract, uh, but it does look to be like it has some some negotiating points on it for sure. Curious. Okay. So I will, I will bear that in mind and I'll start going through the other books as well. All right. Uh, one of the other scrolls that she finds is a scroll of absorb elements. Ooh. Uh, and one is of chromatic orb. She does in fact, uh, recognize all three of them. So you all can decide what you want to do with those. Uh, I think she has, does she maybe have Shocking Grasp as a spell? So she definitely wouldn't need that. Uh, no, she does not. So whatever, you all can decide who gets what scrolls, but. Okay. Um, all right, so you're going to look through some of the other books. Merrick, what are you doing? You're still reading this book? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If it's all about devils and stuff and it's all infernal, oh, yeah. Okay. That's what they're doing. All right. Xanda? Um... Upon the dart being shot out of the chest, <laughs> yes, Zenda pulls her dagger back out again because she uh -huh. needed both hands for the books. Pulls her dagger back out again and sort of walks over and peeks in there, sees what everyone else sees, uh -huh. and then a little sad goes back to her books because it's all a bunch of stuff that she doesn't understand and doesn't know. What's right. I mean, so. she Zed, Lambeau says she, says she could show you uh, how to use these spell scrolls if you want to try and do some magic, but you'd have to be real careful with them. Zenda just hesitates for a second, puts the dagger back in, and decides to look at the scrolls. <laughs> okay, uh, she'll she'll start simple with you and and show you yes. show you the uh, the the shocking grasp scroll, great. so you two that can have great. a little powwow on that. All right, so anything else we want out of this room? What that you want to do? Information you want from it? How long are you spending in here? Tell me things. I will keep the scroll that seems to have his musings on the contract. Okay. Um, so we'll tuck that into some kind of pocket or bag. Okay. And, uh, that's, I think that's pretty much it for me. Uh, oh, one thing I will ask Lambeau if she detects any magic in here. Uh, definitely on the scrolls, uh, but that is actually all in this room that she detects any magic on. Okay. Um, do I find anything in the books? Is there anything for me to find in the books? As I'm, no, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> secret rooms in secret rooms. No. One could hope. One know? one can hope. Absolutely. No dog. We heard you like adventure. secret room. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I uh, I think I think I blacked out. I missed. There was a contract. You actually found a contract. Like kind of a scroll talking about the contract. So, you know. Okay. Just you know, little little notes like you know, uh, uh, don't you know, don't accept the first offer. Uh reminders to like go through loopholes uh in particular uh in particular you notice a few notes that are like uh you know find ways around direct necromancy uh and another one that says uh make sure the power is permanent and things like that so it looks like he was trying to, like he was still trying to like conjure a demon or something or devil right Kind of like he was negotiating with a devil. Like clearly, it is clear that he wanted to make some sort of a deal, and this was his his like notes on, you know, what he wanted to, what he wanted to uh, make sure and address in the, in the uh, in the negotiations for that contract for that deal. Gotcha. How old does that paper look? Uh, not super old not old enough that you can tell that it is very old i'm not really sure i suppose you okay. could do an investigation check if you wanted but i'm not sure how to tell no, the age valid. of paper beyond that yeah because <laughs> my, my thought was was this something from iron gate types like was that oh yeah i mean iron gate has sort of been on and off siege for a while now uh so you know mm -hmm. okay. could be could be very easily Okay. Okay. Anything else in so, here? It looks like we found a lot of nothing again. I mean, just a lot going on. But yeah, let's. Uh, I think there's another room to investigate on the floor, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Or was this the oh. last one? 
Uh, no, this was the last one on this floor. Okay, no, that's right. So we will go back up to the third floor and see if there's anything I, that we missed, I, I suppose. All right. So up to the third floor you go. Let's see what you find up there. So uh, you have, have taken care of... Uh, the bathroom on the north side, uh, the the main bedroom, uh, the master su- master bedroom suite on the north side. There are some doors further to the south, uh, in on the third floor. If you wanted to explore any of those, let me though. Let me have all of you make. I'm gonna call it intelligence investigation. I think from all of you, and I'll do one for for Lambeau as well. Uh, as soon as I remember, she's a plus four, I think. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Why? Oh, no. That's a seven for uh, Zephyr, a natural one for Zenda. Mm. And a 25 from Merrick. Ooh. Oh, come on, Merrick. A seven yeah. from Lambeau as well. Merrick, you all have now had a bit of a chance to sort of get get a feel for the layout of this house. And something isn't matching up. There, there is a space somewhere in sort of the northern half of the room, somewhere like on the west side, that like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a negative space. Like none of the rooms that you've gone into have sort of taken up this space that you feel like should be there. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So there's like a, there's a part in the house we haven't really... That there is a part from the outside we can see, but we haven't really found a room that goes to it. Yeah, sort of. Like, the, the rooms inside don't seem to take up the full volume of what you would expect. And it's not very big. It's probably just, I don't know, maybe five by five. Like, it's a tiny little space that you think. But there's something that doesn't quite line up. What area up here is up against that? Uh, what, it that? sort of feels like it should be bit somewhere between the the uh, master suite bedroom and the bathroom. Lovely. I'm going to go back into the master bedroom and try... No, I'm going to go back into the bathroom and see if I can find anything of note. The smell is not much better as you go in there. What are you looking for? Uh, Same thing, like, akin to the the library or like anything that I can pull or like try to open secret door. Sure. Go ahead and give me, oh, I'll take intelligence investigation. What are the rest of you doing while, uh, Merrick is, is about this. Hmm. Zephyr, um, wants to go back into the master bedroom and see if maybe there's like a, any kind of diary or anything. I'm, I'm imagining Ovid would have taken that with him, but it's always worth a shot. All right. You can go in there. Uh, I'll take investigation from you as well, Zenda. Woo. Um, Zenda noticing that both of them have very clearly decided what they're going to do, sort of stands there and looks between the both of them, trying to decide which one to follow. Uh Uh-huh. And she chooses to follow Merrick because they walked off very directly yep. and did not give any communication as to what they were doing. Great. I love and it. And so I'm curious. <laughs> make me, Zenda, since you had some luck with this uh, yesterday when you were here, make me another wisdom survival check up here, and I'll get back to you in just a moment. Merrick, what was your check result? An 18. An 18. Great. I'm going to hold on telling you what you find until I hear Zenda's result. So we're going to hop to oh, Zephyr. Zephyr, what did you get on your investigation check? 17. Uh, you do find a sort of uh, diary of sorts, I suppose. Most of the pages in it have been ripped out, uh, and a lot of what's left are some really grotesque sort of diagrams and drawings of anatomy. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, it's almost like a physician's anatomy book. Uh, mm. It's quite, it's, it's not very well drawn, and it's pretty gross, but there it is. Okay, I'll hold on to those. Zenda, what'd you get? I got an 11. 
Okay, so uh, in that case, Merrick, you uh, are sort of looking around and you realize that there is a little, there's a pull chain on the uh, pipe that sort of leads from the ceiling into into the uh, the barrel where Zenda puked yesterday. Um, but as you sort of examine it, it looks like the pull chain, it looks like it's supposed to be like to open up the spigot so that water will come down. But it doesn't look like it's connected right. I pull it. You pull it. You pull it, and a portion of the wall behind the barrel and the spigot swings open. And beyond, you see a very narrow space with a spiral staircase uh, leading up and down. Oh. Well, we found another curious thing. We Zenda can... just nods and pulls out her dagger. Zephyr... <laughs> Zephyr will come. Oh, another uh, secret entrance. Let's uh, investigate further. I say we go up first. Sure. And we go up. Okay. Up you go. Uh, as you walk upstairs, the sound of your uh, footsteps in this uh, almost entirely stone stairwell. Most of the house has been wood to this point, but this stairwell is 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 stone walls, stone stairs. And so your footsteps sort of echo as you begin traipsing up the stairs. And the stairs finally end in a uh, sort of trap door in the ceiling. Uh. I'm not doing this trap door. <laughs> <laughs> I hurt my head last time. Someone else has to do it. Does it appear to be trapped? Uh, you can, uh, you can trapped, make a trapped door. A, a check if you would like, an intelligence, intelligence investigation check. Or 17. Uh, it does not appear to be trapped as far as you can tell. I open it. It does appear to be barred in some way or locked from the other side in some way, shape, or form. Lambo, please knock. <laughs> All right. Knock. All right. Uh, Lambo I'm... says, well, if somebody's up there, uh, it's not going to be a secret that we're coming, but okay. And you, you have to say her line. Oh, that's right. So, she, so she says, but okay, knock knock. It's time to Sherlock, and uh, lo and behold, a loud booming knock rings, and it's particularly loud here in this stone, this small stone enclosed space. Yes, exactly, Merrick. Uh, but the trap door swings open, uh, and you hear a soft <gasps> intake of breath from the inside, and we are going to roll some initiative. Right. Oh shit. Oh, uh, shit. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've got a 16. A 16. Where are you, Zafir? There you are. Okay, Zenda? 26. 20. Oh, well, you're going down. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> 26. No, no. Merrick? Tan. Tan. All right. Tan. Lambeau's at a plus two. She got a 19. And now we got a couple of other fun little babies to add. Let's see. Okay, well that got a one, so that's super fun. And a six, so they rolled like absolute garbage. Thank God. That's all right. Uh, should say one. All right, so uh, the that makes sense. You guys aren't up there yet. Oh, I guess I should also. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so Zenda, you are up first. The door has the trap door has swung open. Uh, there was a sharp intake, a gasp inside. Uh, what are you gonna do, Zenda? Because she tends to be a little uh, quick to the draw, whether or not it's smart. Here's the quick intake of breath and. Dashes runs away. Up there. <laughs> runs and runs away. Like, Bye. Bye. And dashes up in through the trap door, okay. ready to tackle whoever's up there, thinking that may, that it might be Felix. All right. So you see, you get up into this trap door, and you see 
an expansive laboratory area that seems to take up the majority of the entire floor, this entire floor of the house. It's very large. There are uh, tables with all sorts of strange devices on them. Uh, there is uh, There are a couple of long sort of like slabs uh, around the room that have all sorts of strange coils and wires and cables surrounding them. Uh, there are a couple of uh, windows up above you all uh, that that are both open uh, and you look up and you see that clouds are beginning to roll in from the outside because uh, these are sort of skylight looking windows but they're actually open. Uh, dark clouds have begun to roll in. You also see several creatures in this space. Uh, make me a uh, wisdom perception check very quickly, please. Mm-hmm. Wisdom perception check, I believe it's a 13. All right. So uh, you see very close to where you are, in fact, right next to where you are uh, by the door, are these two strange, they look like worms or centipedes maybe, but they're, first of all, they're the size of small dogs. Uh, And second of all, they too are sort of uh, amalgamations of flesh and metal and wood and stone uh, and uh, very sharp looking sort of beaks or talons or something in its mouth. Uh, You also see on one of the slabs uh, underneath a sheet is a uh, some sort of prone, very large figure lying underneath a sheet on one of the tables. Uh, And that is all you see at the moment. So that's the very quick what you glance about and see up there. What are you doing? Uh, I go, um, I yell, oh God, down to them. And then I switch out the dagger for the rapier. Okay. And I'm going to swipe at the closest small dog sized centipede. All right. So it you swing. Awful. It does sound pretty awful. You swing at the centipede. Go ahead and make the attack roll. Uh, math is hard. <laughs> I rolled a 16. I think plus oh, seven. Yes. That'll that absolutely. My initiative? Uh, okay. Oh, it plays your attack bonus. Yes. Yes. So yes, you say, uh, that absolutely hits. So go ahead and roll yep. damage. Damage for the rapier. One, oh, two, I forgot four. about that detail. Hmm. Two, three, plus one. <laughs> Eight. Eight. All right. So uh, you stab right into this thing, uh, and it seems uh, you, it was a solid blow, but this thing. It just, your your rapier just skitters off of its carapace and seems to do next to nothing. It seems to be immune uh, to your to your mundane weapons. Damn. Damn! This is what she yells. Okay. Uh, and you did this from the entrance. Are you moving anywhere else? Oh, I'm definitely getting out of dodge. I realize it misses and I... Go back down? I jump. Or you jump uh, in? Yes. Down? Oh, I jump down. 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 Okay, yeah. down you go. All right. Uh, so one of them, uh, the one that was literally right next to you that you were able to stab with the rapier from the entrance is going to get in a... Oh, no, it doesn't because you're a swashbuckler, so it does not get an attack of opportunity on you. Good call. Uh, all right. Next up is Lambeau. Uh, Lambeau's like, what? What? It, what? Uh, should we... Are we running? Um, Zen is like, I think we should. I think we should run, but go ahead and take a look. And I let them know what's up there, what I saw. Okay, so very quickly, you just rattle off. Uh, I'm not making this decision for the party, so you all yes. tell me what Lambeau would do next. Oh. In general, mm-hmm. like, would she go up? Would she attack? Would she run away? Would she try and have a conversation with something up there? Uh-huh. Would she... Uh-huh. Are they sentient enough to have a conversation? Because that would be her first bet, I think. I mean, she hasn't seen them. So based on Zenda's description, no, but also that was very quick. I don't think we're running. We're we're prone to run away because we need to investigate further. I feel like we need to like confront this, and Lambeau would know that. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, she's going to. In that case, she definitely doesn't want to be the first one up there. But you guys want to go up there, and she's not sure about whether or not uh, these are bad things. So she's gonna. Uh, she is going to uh, point upwards towards the opening, and she's gonna because she does this all the time, and she really likes this spell. So she's gonna cast slow, just sort of in the space up there to try and grab those two things that were around the, around the, uh, 
uh, the trap door. So she's cast in slow. They are going to make wisdom saving throws. As I recall, that is not really their forte. Um, let's see. Oh, they're not terrible at it, though, shockingly. Uh, nope, that's not what I meant to do at all. This is what I wanted to do. Okay, that one fails. And, okay, so one of them... Uh, fails and one of them succeeds, so one of them is in fact slowed at this point. Uh, scout one and two, and this one is slowed. All right. Uh, so she says, "Well, there you go. That should help. Uh, I'll follow you." Next up is Zephyr. All right, Zephyr will head up with his rapier drawn. All right, uh, and will attack the first of these creepy creatures that he sees. Okay. Uh, why don't you make me a quick wisdom perception check as well? 21. Okay. You notice a couple of additional things from what Zenda noticed. One is that you can tell which of the two creepy crawly things is the one that appears to be moving a bit more slowly now. So you can target that one uh, specifically or not target that one specifically if you would like. You also see sort of back behind, uh, hiding sort of behind the table with the figure underneath the sheet on it. Uh, you see someone hiding behind that table. I have a pretty good idea who that might be. <laughs> but, um, yes, I'm going to thrust the rapier at the slow one. All right. Do the thing. Thrust away. 15? That'll do. Awesome. For six damage. And, again, just like Zenda, your rapier just can't seem to, to really get a good, solid penetration on this thing even with that it looks like it just doesn't do anything i have a quick question yeah uh about the space up here yeah like how how uh tall is it from the floor to the ceiling oh uh the ceiling is sloped so clearly this is sort of like the attic area you can see where the roof sort of is sloped so the mm -hmm. highest point in the center of the room i would say it's actually quite tall i'd say it's probably 12 to 15 feet uh at the sides it's probably barely five feet Gotcha. Okay. That's it. Uh, okay. Are you, uh, so you're currently also standing there in the entranceway. Are you going up, going down, staying there? Um, I'm going to move away so that people can come through the entryway. Okay. Move away into the room or back down the Just stairs? Into the, into the room. room. All right. So you move in, staying within range of that wormy creature, uh, keeping it from attacking you. Merrick, you are up. So I'm going to climb up. Do I see the person hiding behind, or do I just see the two things? Uh, you can make me a perception check if you would like, wisdom perception. That's a 12. Uh, you do not notice them, no. It's okay, all happening um, very fast. I'm going to hop on in. Uh... Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and ray of sickness. Oh, is it, wait, were the things, were the creatures, like, seemingly undead creatures, or were they just... Uh, dead? they look, these look definitely more constructy than undead. This sort, this is clearly a different sort of line of, of creatures that have been created. <sighs> Poison damage probably still won't work. Okay, I'm gonna go pop in, and I'm gonna back next to Zephyr and cast Witch Bolt on one of them. Okay, on the one uh, that is right, that Zephyr is within five feet of, or the one that's sort of on the other side of the trapdoor entrance? Other side. All right. That's a 12 to hit. 12 is not going to hit this one. Uh, so you fire off the Witch Bolt, but this thing sort of skitters to the side and dodges to the side. Uh, excellent. That is your turn. It is the wormy centipede construct thing's turn next. Uh, so the one that is uh, sort of uh, on the... Mm -hmm. uh, the one that's sort of on the other side uh, is uh, like... It looks like it's it notices you and is sort of going back and forth, but it's waiting. The one in between that's right next to the two of you uh, takes its tail, and you see its tail sort of lift up a little bit, and there's a spike at the end of the tail, and the spike sort of crackles with with lightning, and it stabs into the ground, and I need the two of you to make dexterity saving throws, please, as the lightning zaps through the floor, uh, and we'll see if you can jump out of the way of it quickly. No. Oh, no. Yeah, no, that's a sick. Oh, dear. All right, so both of you fail this, and you both take, oh, 21 lightning damage. 
Um. <laughs> oh no, Merrick. Oh, Merrick. Merrick. Merrick's not sweet. Not, not Holy shit! Anymore. Sweet baby angel. <laughs> Merrick's in the ground. Okay, so Merrick uh -oh. drops to the ground, convulsing and charred uh, and unconscious on the ground. The other creature uh, skitters around, having seen its cue, skitters around and attempts to bite at Zephyr. Uh, Zephyr does a... Come on. Does a 19 hit you? Yes. All yes, right, sir. so it's going to do six piercing and two lightning damage to you. Uh, oof, I'm not... In great shape, but I'm still up. Okay, that's really good news. Uh, Damn it. Uh, all right, we're at the top of the second round. Zenda, you you hear yelps and screams and fighting is happening above you in the room, though you can't see any of it from where you currently are. Oh, I hate being the top of the round. Okay, so <sighs> Zenda takes a deep breath and goes sprinting up to see what happened to her friends. <laughs> I don't know what just happened in the background of your situation, uh, Emily, but it was Great. perfectly timed. Perfect timing. I yeah. Know, perfect timing. All right. So I'm sorry. I was so distracted by that. I, did, I have no <laughs> idea what you're, what Zenda's doing. What is Zenda, Zenda doing? Is printing up. After okay. She's taking a deep breath and is ready. All right. She was printing up and I have to like see what's happening. Yeah. So right? you get up there. You see Merrick on the ground. You see Zephyr sort of twitching a little bit as little bits of lightning finish coursing around his body. You see that they are sort of flanked by these two centipede construct flesh stone metal things. Flesh stone metal things. Okay. Um, do I notice, am I able to notice anything else in the room? Like, is there, are there any other elements present? Like, is there water? Is there fire? Is there like anything else? Doesn't look like there are any of those things. No. Great. Um, oh, I'm so small. I'm so small. I'm small. trying to think if I can get one of them up off the ground and onto one of the tables so they don't get hit by these things anymore. Can uh, I? You could, I mean, you could try and pick Merrick up. I don't know. Can I try to pick up Merrick? Can yeah. Can I try? Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to be real careful with with that though, because if you try and move to get to Merrick, you're gonna be within the reach of these creatures, and they'll be able to attack you on your way out. Oh, you're right. Okay, so my sword didn't work. Can I? Mm, you're right. Let me. I want to try to shoot one of the fleshy parts with my okay. bow and arrow. You also, I will say, you also remember Lambo gave you uh, that spell scroll, that... so you you do have that. It's the a it's a grass. it's a one use thing, but it, you have it also as an option. E yeah, I'm gonna I'm a hold on to that. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, All right, so you're gonna try and shoot with the crossbow? Mm hmm. All right. 11. Uh, right? And ele oh, sorry, I wasn't looking. And 11, just yeah. it. J uh, which one were you attacking? The one that has its one, tail in the ground or the other one? Uh, the other one, the one that's going to attack. Okay, so that one, you uh, it misses, it just skitters out of the way of your arrow. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. All right. Next up, we have Lambeau. So I guess Lambeau's coming up too. Sees that things are not great. Uh, and I guess she's going to, I don't know, you all tell me. Is she attacking? Is she, uh, what's she doing? I'll, I can help pick the specific things, but generally give me an idea of what she's thinking. I feel like she has to attack something, right? Sure. Everybody else agree that yeah. she would attack? All yeah. right. Well, she can figure out which one is slowed. So that one's going to be a little bit easier to knock on. Oh, they should have made... Uh, saves at the end of their turn for the slow, right? I forgot about that. Do they make that at the end of every turn? Make wisdom save at the end of each turn. No. Yes, okay, so it needs to make its wisdom save. I'm not on the right page. Okay, so it is no longer slowed, and she is aware of that. Uh, so she is going to hop up, and uh, she's going to... Let's see, I Does think... she notice the guy in the back? Uh, good question. She has not made a check yet. Probably. Uh, she does, actually. She does see him back there. Would she attack him? Magic missile? Him, I, would she attack him right off, or would she try and talk to him? I don't know the answer I'm asking. Mm, I'm not the one to ask for that. <laughs> <laughs> Other thoughts? I I don't know. I feel like she you, would try to talk, but I don't know if it's the best thing to do. Well, she she might say something along the lines of, 
you know, I don't know what you're doing up here, but you better call off your critters or we're going to come pounding your head in. Uh, yes, that is literally exactly yes. what yeah. she says. And she will she will attack one of the critters just to show them that she means business. Uh, so she, I love that. So she is going to cast, let's see, she'll keep it, she'll keep it sort of calm for right now. She's going to cast, uh, let's see, she'll do a chaos bolt. Why not? She'll do a first level chaos bolt. Um, so she's got a roll to hit to start. Nope, that's his 1d2 instead of 1d20. Oh, she definitely hits. And now she's got to roll a d8 uh, to figure out the damage type. It's a 5, so it is lightning damage. <laughs> uh, on a hit, the target takes 2d8 plus 1d6 damage. The number determines the damage type. All right. If you roll the same number on both d8s. What? I know it's a weird spell. The number, if you roll the same number, the chaotic energy leaps from the target to a different creature. Oh. Because you roll 2d8 for the damage and it. Determines. Oh, and I choose one of them. Okay, 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 okay. I got it. All right, got it. I got it. That's a weird spell. Uh, all right, so the other one is a six. So it's either lightning or poison. They're constructs. They're both shitty choices, but she's going to go with lightning because uh, that makes more sense than poison to her. Uh, so. Plus another d6. Woo! So that's 16 lightning damage uh, to the one that is uh, attacking you directly with its bite, Zephyr. And actually, it seems that the uh, it seems that the lightning damage does, in fact, seem to work on it. Uh, nice. So uh, that's a little strange, but it does seem to work. All right. Uh, next up is, and then she's gonna sort of move away, Zephyr. Okay, um, shoot. <laughs> Zephyr is going to, um, this is going to be tricky. How, how close is Zephyr to Merrick? Uh, right next to Merrick, actually, because Merrick okay. came right by you, yeah. That's good. Then, uh, he will cast, um, Cure Wounds. Alrighty. And we're going to go ahead and do... So Merrick has recovered 12 hit points. All right. So Merrick, you are back to a little over a third of your hit points. Conscious and on the ground, but conscious. Thanks, BB. And uh, Zephyr will uh, use that moment to not only heal him of hit points, or heal them of hit points, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, say something inspiring to Merrick along the lines of, get up on your feet. We can still do this. All and, right. Uh, bardic inspiration. I love it. On your feet, the musical. Get on your feet. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Next up is Merrick. So, Merrick, you are conscious with 12 hit points. You have been inspired. Um, where is everyone positioned in the room right now? So Lambeau is sort of the furthest away from all of you. She sort of backed away from the table where, uh, the, or no, I guess she would have gone towards the table where the, the figure is that she spoke to. So she's sort of halfway between you all and that table. Uh, La uh Lambeau is, uh, that was Lambeau. Zephyr is right next to you. And Zenda, where are you? Muted, Muted. my love. Ah, I tried to shoot the bow and arrow, and I think I just jumped out of the way. So okay, so she's so she's sort of still. yeah near the opening, sort yeah. of on the other side of it from where you all are. So on the opposite side of the creatures, away from us, so it's us grouped up and the creatures on the opposite behind them. Uh -huh. I'm gonna summon me some demons. Okay, so on the opposite side of which creatures? Of the construct creatures, because I don't know what the other one is. I don't know about the, other, the third one. All right. So I roll a d6. I'm going to roll my red dice if it makes sense for this. Um, I'm swinging four demons of challenge rating one half or lower. Four of one half or lower. All right. We're going to take a moment. Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll a die for their initiative while I'm looking up what they're going to be? You said one half or lower? Yes. Okay. And they rolled a nine plus whatever their modifier is. Okay. We will find out momentarily. Man, my computer is being slow AF. Sorry, everybody. It's okay. Let me see if I can get it up. All righty. Here we go. Oh, you got it. Yeah, I got it. 
All right, so let's see. There is something called... These are demons that we're uh, calling in, right? Absolutely. There's something on this list called a cackler, so that really sounds like definitely what we should be summoning right now. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know what it is or what book it is from, but I am sort of obsessed. Why? Why are you doing this? Um, oh, it's from Ravnica. Why not? Oh, because those are gross. Okay, so we're going to summon a cackler. These small jabbering jesters. Uh, they are, ooh, they're super creepy looking. Uh, and how many of them? Four of them show up? Yeah. All right, and what did you roll for their initiative? Nine plus three. Nine five. plus three, so they're at a 12. Uh, cackler. All right, so we will add them to the initiative order. Uh, at 12, which actually is before you, so they'll have to wait till next round to take their turn. Anything else on your turn? Uh, that would be it for me. I'm going to try to get behind. Mm, I'm going to try to climb on top of the table and pray up. Uh, no. You'll have to move out of the reach of this bronze scout that's right next to you. No, so I'm just going to I'm gonna stay where I am. And yeah. All right, excellent. All right. Next up are those creatures. Uh, the one that is next to you, Zephyr, is going to try to bite you again, I think. It got a taste for you. So it's going to try it again. Uh, oh, it's a 24 to hit. Oh, yeah. That is six piercing and five lightning damage. I'm at zero. Okay, so uh, Zephyr has brought Merrick back. Uh, but then falls himself. The other creature is going to attempt to bite you, Merrick, because you're right there. It's going to move around towards you and attempt to bite you, but a 10 does not hit you. So you manage to dodge out of the way of its bite. Uh, let's see. We'll give that one more go. Zenda, you are up. Top of round three. Do I have... I have a healing potion, right? Or something that I can give to You do. To fear? Yes, you do. Okay, I would like to rush over there as quickly as possible and yep. administer that to Zephyr. Okay, absolutely. So you can use your action. Dump that down Zephyr's throat. Uh, roll 2d4 plus 2 to see what that healing ends up being. 2d4 plus 2. Hey, eight. all right. So you get 8 hit points, oh. Zephyr. You're brought back coughing and Come sputtering. Back. Anything as your bonus action, Zenda? Um, can I... Am I able to um, drag him a little bit further away from the thing, or is that too much action? Uh, that's probably going to be too much, because, again, they're right there, so they'll get attacks of opportunity if you pull him away too quickly. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And I don't think I have All right, well, you, that was a clutch turn, because Zephyr was not in a good way and is your I, healer. I, I know. I, hello. Uh, <laughs> Lambeau, looking pretty horrified at everything that's going on, is going to call out one more time, I said call them off! And she's going to throw, uh, let's see, she'll throw a second level magic missile and throw two darts at each of, oh, I'm, oh, I'm looking at the wrong sheet. I was like, she doesn't have magic missile? I thought I cast it earlier. So she's going to cast a second level magic missile, throw two darts at each of the creatures. Uh, let's see, the one that she hit last time that is biting the crap out of, whoops, biting the crap out of Zephyr is going to take five, uh, five force damage. And that one actually sort of short circuits and sizzles and pops and explodes a little bit, falls apart and has been dispatched. The other one... Takes only four. I rolled two. I rolled three ones and a two out of those four d4. So that one takes four damage uh, from afar. And Lambo says, I'm not kidding. We got one of them. And uh, <laughs> let's see. Does she have any fun bonus actions? I don't think so, but let's find out. No, she does not. Uh, all right. So that is her turn. Next up is Zephyr. Zephyr will uh, kind of tug on on Zenda's like sleeve or something, and he's going to say, uh, "I have a plan, but we need to be very careful about it. Go sneak up around who I think is Ovid back there, uh, and and please make sure that he knows that we mean business." And he's going Ooh. to cast a third level invisibility that will oh shit, Zephyr. And Zenda. All right. So Zephyr and Zenda pop out of view, Ooh. invisible to all. And immediately Lambo goes, oh, shit, I forgot I had that potion. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and uh, Zephyr will move the hell away from this uh, this creepy centipede thing. Yep, absolutely. All right. Uh, oh, I wonder if I have a cackler on here. That would make life easier. Nope. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so the cacklers, uh, it is the cacklers' turn. Get up too. All right, great. You tell me what they're doing. Um, so it's four of them. They do they see? So they they attack their the nearest thing to them. Is it? It was probably going to be a toss-up uh, with Zenda Zephyr and uh, the bronze... I mean, the uh, well, the creepy worm thing. Uh, but now that those two are invisible, it's going to attack the, the creepy worm thing. Um, so they're right next to it. So I don't think they would use a firebolt. Um, they can just go ahead and use their... Let's do two bites and two spike chains. Uh, well, they only get one attack, either the bite... Oh, there's four of them. I see what you mean. Yes, 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 yes. All right, yes, absolutely. So, the bites... Uh, that's, a uh, 22 to hit. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll say that half of those attacks hit, but none of them do any damage to this creature, because they are all non-magical weapon attacks. Uh, so they're biting and smacking with chains and just don't seem to do anything to this creature. Right. It is now abundantly clear to anyone who is watching and paying attention that these worms are completely immune to non-magical damage. Rude. Uh, oops. Gaga, gaga. Next up is, I don't know, Merrick. Um, so I don't, I still don't see this person back there. I'm still worried about this thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I'm going to cast me a second level witch. No, oh, they are lightning. Okay. No, the lightning seemed to work when the lightning flew out of uh flew out of Lambo's okay. chaos bolt. So a second level witch bolt. All right. A bitch bolt, if you will. <laughs> I I will not. No, I think I will actually. That's sort of delightful. <laughs> uh, so that's a fourteen to hit. Fourteen will do. Yay. So that's 2d12. It is 2d12. That's a good 17 lightning damage. 17 lightning damage. So you just shock this one, and it sort of smokes and sizzles and pops and slumps to the ground, defeated. Do I have to use my action to disperse the demons? I don't know. You will... F uh, oh, we should find that out now, I suppose. Yeah. Um... Let's see. No, it's it's a, it's a concentration spell, right? Yeah. So then, no, you can just uh, release concentration as a free action whenever you like. All right, so I'm just going to drop it because there's nothing else here to me. Hostile creatures. Roll initiative. The demons pursue as part of the casting. Blah, blah, blah. Great. Okay, so you just let go of that concentration and the cacklers yep. disappear. Bye-bye, cacklers. All right. Uh, you hear... Uh, from the corner, uh, a soft voice say, oh, no. And uh, another one of these little worm things crawls out from the far corner of the room and begins heading towards, uh, actually, I think Lambeau, uh, and is going to, let's see, is going to pierce into the ground with its lightning tail uh, and try and, and try and shock Lambeau. Let's see. Her dexterity save is a plus two. So here we go. So she, ooh, natural 20. She is able to leap out of the way of the worst of the uh, lightning damage and only takes five lightning damage, just the tail end of a little bit of a shock. Um, and she's not real pleased about it, uh, but there it is. Uh, the, uh, you all can, anybody who's paying attention over there, uh, see, like, a little flash of light. And who's near the table at this point? Lambeau is, are any of the rest of you actually near it at this point? Not yet, right? No, Not I don't think so. Yet. Okay, so. I don't think so. Uh, so Lambeau sees what happens, uh, though I don't know that she'd comment on it because it isn't all that important. Uh, but the you hear a sort of spark and pop and sizzle, and the the figure on that slab begins to vibrate and sits up, pulls the sheet away from it, and underneath is a large, fully humanoid-looking figure of all bits stitched together 
sewn. It is entirely flesh. There is no inorganic material used in it. It is entirely fleshy. Uh, and it sits up, swings its table, its legs over the table, stands, lets out a groan, and begins to approach you all. And that is where we are going to leave it for this week. It's no! Frankenstein. <laughs> awesome thank you all thank everybody for hanging out for watching this was super fun uh i love a good cliffhanger ending uh and it seems that you have found dr ovid and perhaps what he meant by onward and upward thanks so much for hanging out everybody we're gonna go around really quickly uh and let everybody know who we are where you can find us on various social media platforms and one of your favorite moments from the day let's go in the other order today so let's start uh, right now so let's start with kyle hi i'm kyle uh, I played Merrick the Wizard. Um, you can find me on Twitter at super underscore queero or on the Prism Palace podcast or Domino Theory podcast. Um, this Saturday, I am on a charity stream on Salty Sweet Games. I'm playing Urban Shadows. So that's going to be fun. I'm going to be playing. Fun. I'm going to actually be playing the demon this time. Hey. And not just summoning them. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, favorite thing from this one i think the bathtub the bathtub was my favorite thing the bathtub was pretty pretty awesome i have to say that was a fun time yeah all right i love it uh ismael let's go to you next oh my god i'm so sorry that's so loud there we go uh yes so ismael alvarez i play zafir steward uh and my favorite part from today um you know Probably my favorite part to, from today was just the, the exploration of the house. Uh, even though there was a whole lot of nothing, I think it was a really good opportunity for us to kind of bounce off of each other and kind of be frustrated together. Yeah, totally. Interesting. Yeah, I liked it. All right, and M. Hi, I'm Emily. You can find me on Instagram at Emily D. Mads, I believe. I play Zenda. And I have a couple favorite parts. I really liked the the requested title of today's show that we did not actually share. Oh yeah, let's share that now because I need to write it down. Mm -hmm. uh, it was all hands on deck, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was cackling. It was not my idea. I thought it was hilarious. Nope, that was all um, smile. <laughs> that was all Ismail. Um, but then we also, I really liked. Yeah, I liked the exploring. Um, and I definitely gagged during the bathtub. Part. Yeah. I was gagging. Uh, great. And I am Eugenio, also known as your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, DM Jazzy Hands. Oh, where can we find you on social media, Em? And, and Ismail, did you say that? No, I, I, did. I, I she, she did. I did not. Okay. Uh, but uh, I am at King Laura Thorne, aka Elven Wizard King, on Twitter. Great. I am Eugenio, also known as your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, DM Jazzy Hands. You can follow me on Twitter at, at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, in nine days, I'm the, uh, I'm the dungeon master for the actual play podcast, The Last Refuge. In nine days, we are going to uh, have a live stream of our second anniversary. Uh, so whether or not you watch the show, it's going to be a very exciting stream on the Variant Roles channel. So come check us out. You can find out more information about that and about our show by following us on Twitter at, at DND Last Refuge. Uh, what else? Let's see. My, uh, oh, I should do this before I go to my favorite part. Uh, so tonight at 8 o'clock here on the Greyhawk channel, we have uh, The Grove Where We Meet, uh, which is Gnome's awesome show about the Feywild. Alternatively, I will be playing on a show tonight at 8 p.m. Uh, set in Ravnica called Ravnica Technically Legal over on the Variant Roles channel, so that is another option for you. You can also find me on Fridays playing in a game on Encounter Roleplay called Basilica of the Cudgel, and on Sundays DMing uh, a game for Gratuitous RP, the Half-Rate Heroes. Uh, favorite moment of today? Hmm... I did really like the bathtub. Um, I also just like to like the find the chance to finally do a little bit of like uh, it wasn't a dungeon, but like dungeon esque exploration and stuff like that. It was super fun. I should uh, mention I should give credit to where it is due. Uh, the house of Doctor Ovid is a reskinned version of the Death House from the Curse of Strahd module published by Wizards of the Coast. Uh, I changed out a lot of it so that it was uh, themed for Brenton and for Doctor Ovid. Uh, but the layout of the house is pretty close to that of the Death House from Curse of Strahd. So if you're interested and seeing more about what was originally there you can check out check out that module uh cool so uh you can find us back here 1 p.m eastern 10 a.m is that right is that math right yes 10 a.m pacific uh next week here on the greyhog channel like i said monsters and myths uh is going to be uh up the next show here on the greyhog channel at 
uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, so you can check them out. Uh, we do want to do a quick thank you again at the end of the stream to everyone who has subscribed, followed, uh, or joined our Patreon uh, at patreon.com slash the Greyhawk channel. We couldn't do all of the amazing programming that we do here on the Greyhawk channel without your support. We also want to thank Roll20 for being a supporter of the channel. We want to thank Heroic Maps for being our official battle map sponsor, Tabletop Loot for allowing us to have a coupon code and supporting us in that way, and Devin Rue and Cantrip Can. Handles. Thanks so much for all of that. If you haven't, once again, click the uh, click the little heart at the top of the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and it f uh, sends a follow to you so that any time that this channel goes live, you can be notified of all the awesome shows that are going on here. Uh, we will see you, like I said, next week uh, back here on the Greyhawk channel. Lambo should be back with us then. And I think that's all I've got for you. Am I forgetting anything, folks? Anything else we need to go over? No, 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 no. All right. I think so. um, all right. Well, I'm frantically trying to get over to uh, the. Th oh. Now it's being slow. I was going to raid, but stay on Twitch. Go find another channel. Go support people. Watch new things. Find live streams. Th support content creators. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your week. We'll see you next week for episode six of The Brenton Files Monsters and Myths. Happy gaming, y'all.